Welcome to Starseed Mission Support. Um, I am not really counting how many at this point. I won't keep counting, but welcome. This is my weekly uh, love transmission to my Starseed family all over the world. And this is a show where I talk about all the most relevant um, information and energies that we are interfacing as a collective and just things that you know every starseed should know um jwg in the chat box i would love to know what your actual name is hello i recognize you from last week um so we're gonna get started in just about five minutes and i usually open these sessions with a little bit of sound healing so that we can tune in and get into an energetic coherence together so welcoming all the beings who are listening to this in a future now moment welcome to this space welcome to this weekly moment in time when we can be together and we can be and feel at home together that's really my main intention is to hold this space wide open so we can come together and heal together and be together today we have a very interesting topic talking about the energy body um, we're going to go deep into the different layers of the aura and how we can take care of this part of our hygiene so that we can feel empowered and sovereign and strong and healthy and always um, beyond the physical. And I know that a lot of starseeds have a lot of energies that they're sensing multidimensional, multidimensionally that sometimes is hard to understand what's happening to you or um, know how to deal with those energies and so we're going to go deep into that today i'm going to start off with a little sound transmission just to welcome everyone into the space
welcoming the beings that are here now with me live, I invite you to take a nice, deep, long breath in. And exhale, release all tension. Feel welcomed, feel embraced in the space. Feel at home, feel loved, feel belonging. Welcome to our weekly Starseed Mission Support Mothership. We are so excited to be with you today, excited to share these transmissions of this very um, important subject that I'm sure will be very relevant for many. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Please share this video with your friends and hit the like, whatever it is. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. I am receiving some uh, censorship from the social media energies. Um, so every little bit of your share helps me get these vibrations out to our friends. And once again, welcome to the space. I am so excited to embrace you and be here together. So sit tight and we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. joyful that you are here tuning in with me live. This is Lizard Breath. I would also love to know what your real name is. You're here every week and you're giving me all the love in all these live streams and I don't even know what your name is. So please tell me who you are unless you would like to remain mysterious. That's totally cool too. And definitely a welcome to everyone who is here live. Um, we have a very deep conversation today, so I'm going to just dive right in. Um, so I want to start today's conversation um, by giving a little bit of a background of how I came into this work that I do. Um, right now, I would kind of say that I am a shaman or a psychic surgeon. Um, for a living, I read people's energy bodies and um, I read people's energy bodies and I can kind of read the different dimensional aspects of their energy body and from there I can see basically any distortions or traumas, past life, present, multidimensional, um, genetic, ancestral, it's all kind of right there because everything is recorded and present in the energy body. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I came to remember these skills that I have and just how important it is for actually us all to begin to activate these levels of awareness because it's really not, you know, a special gift. It's not that I'm special and I get to see these things. Our human awareness of ourself, I'm sure we've all heard the sentence, know thyself. Know thyself, you know, also means just knowing all of the layers of energies that exist inside of our own body, how we feel about ourselves, how we um, feel about the world around us, how we understand these things. 
all of these, you know, beliefs and thoughts and energies, they're all kind of stored in our multidimensional energy body. And to me, the word aura, when I say aura, a lot of people think that aura is just like colors outside of your body. To me, aura is another word for our energy body and all the different layers of our energy body. Um, and so when I think aura, I also think about the layers of energy that are inside my body, not just outside. So we can actually really break these down and we're gonna do that today, but um, I wanna just move into it gently because I know that this conversation can be triggering if we have hidden energies or traumas that are inside of our energy body. So I really wanna approach this conversation as gently as we can. Um, I'm just gonna speak to all dimensional aspects of anyone listening to this video in this now moment or any future now moment that um, there is just pure unconditional love for you in this space and it is safe. We're calling in our higher selves and our source connected highest divine galactic angelic helpers. Um, and just know that, um, you know, you are supported and guided through whatever um, awareness and realizations that need to take place for you to evolve and move into a greater level of wholeness. And once again, we're going to really try to approach the subject really gently um, because a lot of these things, they can be very um, unsettling and difficult to integrate. So I first came into this work probably when I was at Vipassana back in 2015. And um, at that point, I didn't really have a meditation practice. I was exploring psychedelics a lot, predominantly um, things like MDMA and um, ketamine and those things when I was like back in just like a raver. I was really in the rave scene when I first woke up. Um, those things really activated me to my psychic abilities and were the first things that kind of cracked my consciousness open. And, you know, I feel like those were the days of my early shamanic training because, you know, when I would take those things, I would have an entirely different experience than other people. You know, people would just be like really loving or they're tripping. And, you know, I would start communicating with interdimensional beings and start getting downloads about the history of the universe and how reality works. So um, those things, I think, just cracked my um, 3D awareness so that I was able to access these higher aspects of myself. And then eventually, um, you know, I was led to go to this Vipassana retreat. Vipassana is a specific meditation practice that I now um, carry. Um, and it's basically a body scanning exercise. And these retreats is completely silent. You go and you basically meditate eight to 10 hours a day. Um, you basically do nothing but meditate to this specific technique and it is, you know, highly powerful. I think a lot of people have gone because it's actually free to go to these retreats um, and you are happy to make a donation later. But really the first time you go, they, they would love for you to come for free. And so they provide the food and the lodging and you just go and meditate for 10 days. And my experience there was extraordinary. Um, you know, the first three days I started doing this meditation technique and it's like I remember, you know, having done this because um, I my higher self, my body just started guiding me to doing the scanning a lot quicker than what was being taught. And I started picking up these implants and emotional bubbles and started communicating with my galactic team. And then at some point, you know, Buddha came in and started giving me discourses about spirituality and our energy body. And for me, you know, as a lineage holder for some Taoist teachings, I talk about my Taoist ancestors a lot. You know, these ideas about scanning and getting to know our multidimensional energy body is really deeply ingrained into my system um, because, you know, you think about acupuncture and energy medicine, it really comes, you know, really from the ancient Chinese uh, medicine. And so that was when I first was became aware that I can actually close my eyes and check in with my body and feel my body. And I realized that, you know, it wasn't just organs in there. <laughs> you know, it wasn't just bones and muscles and organs. There was also all sorts of weird, different textures of energy. And at that point, 
you know, I was just kind of bewildered by that. I was like, whoa, what is that? And, you know, over the years, I've come to realize that, of course, humans are multidimensional, that we exist not only in the third, third dimension, material existence, but there are so many other dimensions that we exist in as well that we can access with our consciousness and our energy body. Um, and you guys hear me say this, that you know, for a humanity to be stuck in 3D reality and only that is absolutely not normal. Human bodies are created to access all the dimensions all the way up to the God source, the God self. And so, uh, we're now coming into exploring, you know, why is it that there is entire civilizations of human beings that are so trapped and stuck in the purely 3D reality? And we're going to get into that. So um, in that retreat, I started, you know, meditating and clearing out these implants. I found so many weird looking things. And at that point, I was like really weirded out by it. And I did Google searches and I couldn't really find much information out there at that time. I think there was only, you know, somebody named Cameron Day who was talking about implants and astral clearing and things like that. So maybe a year later, I found the work of Eric Rains, um, who is a beloved brother in our community who also does this kind of healing work. And I ended up going to one of his retreats and, and you know, realized that um, this person was also experiencing the same thing. And then I began to meet very many other people who were also exploring just beyond the physical. What are the energies that are lying there and why it is so relevant for, you know, humanity and especially, you know, the light workers and star seeds to gain a deeper and more refined understanding and perception of these levels of our being. Um, and so I'm going to give kind of a little bit of a general overview of the anatomy of our aura. And this is not from any textbook. It's just from my, you know, hundreds of sessions that I've done with my clients and kind of the um, similarities of, that I see in their energy bodies and how I have categorized the different densities of our energy body. Um, and as we travel through them, um, perhaps you would like to kind of start to tune into your own body just gently. If you feel like there's something that you're not ready to explore yet, you know, just kind of tune it out. You don't have to go there right now. Um, perhaps you would want to be in a more contained um, space or container to be exploring these kinds of things. But I know that there are others out there like me who are, you know, ready for this information. I, I My teacher used to say some seedlings only need a drop of water to grow. So I'm really wanting to just be open source. I want to share these codes with you. So for those of you that are ready and just need this little boost in your healing process, um, I my intention is to um, offer that for you guys. Um, and for those of you who do want, you know, more support, the next iteration of my Galactic Shamanism school is actually starting in August. And you'll hear more about that later on. But so let's let's do it. Um, so we have our physical body. Um, the very next layer that I see in our multidimensional anatomy is the etheric body. The etheric body, when it's really healthy, I see it almost very deeply connected to the fascia body of the physical um, body and the nervous system. And this is like the closest layer to the, the physical body. And I think that all the layers actually intersect as well. And they're like the, it's like they're all in the same space, but they're different vib vibrations. And so they're separated by this, the oscillation of their being, um, not by space. I hope that makes sense. So for example, um, all of these layers of energy can exist in the space of my sacral chakra or of the lower body belly region, but you can distinguish different densities of energies inside of that same space. So when the etheric body is healthy, I see this mycelium fascial kind of network of electrodes, um, kind of energy flowing freely through the body. Um, it's almost like this tickle or this orgasmic kind of feeling throughout the entire body where cosmic scalar energy um, is interacting with our physical body. And a lot of times we can 
kind of bring these energies into our body and it kind of gives you a little shiver. So when our etheric body is super healthy, we feel really good in our physical body. We feel alive, you know, that word or orgasmic, like organism, the feeling of being alive and that's, that's it, right? So our physical body feels like this tingly, buzzy, kind of nice feeling. Um, this layer of our body, it, when, you know, there is trauma, um, can create, you know, physical aches and pains, can create um, fibroids and tumors and different kinds of growths. Um, this part of our body, um, whew, whew, sorry, I'm just feeling the energy come in. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is also the layer of our body where we can, if we have missing organs, um, because this is really like the, it's like a very gel-like um, thickness <laughs> that is very much um, like the physical body. It's just not as dense. It's like a very dense energy layer. And so if we have organs that have been removed or for males, you know, your foreskin, you can actually regrow those um, organs in the etheric body to hold space and to um, still play the part of the physical organ that is now missing. I hope that makes sense. Um, the very next layer I sense is the emotional body. And when the emotional body is healthy, it feels very fluid and free flowing. You know, even if something really shitty happens, there's still like a space where it almost like it's a cushion. It's like there's still can be peace and space to actually interact and engage with the thing that's shocking or the thing that requires our attention. But when our emotional body is like kind of got coagulated energies and it's not free flowing, you know, free flowing from the different emotions of, you know, peace and calm, contentment, satisfaction. Um, when there's no outside stimuli, stimuli and you're just sitting there and you're just you know, being normal, like it's just doing nothing. You're just sitting there doing nothing. Um, when the emotional body is healthy, you know, there's just these calm energies of contentment and fulfillment. You're just content to sit there. So obviously if there are other energies that are there, like, you know, frustration, sadness, anger, fear, for the most part, humanity kind of live in those frequencies um, and those frequencies begin to coagulate in the light body, and this is what weighs us down. This is what makes us dense, right? So um, our, I mean, the emotional clearing, the emotional work is definitely the biggest part of our embodiment process uh, because, you know, starseeds, we have no troubles being spiritual. We are already super spiritual beings, um, spirituality and the cosmic oneness and all the exciting cosmic galactic energies, they can come very easily to us. The reason why we can't sustain those, those energies is because there's these opposing denser energies in our physical body, especially in our lower chakras that are really holding us down or are a direct conflict of those higher frequencies. And so the emotional body, you know, when the emotions are really extreme. So in the case of childhood trauma or long periods of abuse and abandonment and things like that, um, our emotional body can actually kind of coagulate and dense into like super dense fields. Um, and then, you know, those super dense energies can actually feel like entities to us. It can feel like they're an entity in our body when it's actually just a severed and super wounded part of ourself. Of course, those energies will attract entities and actual parasitic beings into our field. But, you know, those energies can only be in our body if the resonant energy is already there. So ancestral energies, um, energies you inherited just from people around you or your parents, um, trauma, just like planet, even planetary trauma, like even just like going to school and not having any fun and you're five years old and like all you, all your body wants to do is like roll around on the floor and have fun, but you're like not allowed. <laughs> so those kinds of experiences can be discombobulating for the soul. 
because the soul is free. The soul is experiencing in the moment. So when there is an external um, structure or authority figure that is imposing his will on you, this can actually create a, a lasting kind of distortion. Feelings like life is not fun, life is limiting, life does not give you what you want. You know, just this, this connection from life itself, from the original three sovereign energies of being alive inside of a body. Um, so emotional energy that condenses really, really dense can create physical pains in the body. Again, fibroids and tumors and growths, rashes, also all, sor all sorts of things different physical symptoms like that. Um, for women, I want to touch on menstrual pain and things like this. So in the um, shamanic traditions and the, you know, traditional medicine paths, um, it is understood that basically 95% of all symptoms in the physical body has an emotion, emotional, spiritual, or mental cause. Um, and so um, this is actually, I think, the mechanics of how, you know, shamanic healing can often address different symptoms of things that the medical system actually can't because the medical system only recognizes symptoms and categorizes everything into symptoms when in the shamanic and the traditional medicine paths recognize um, every symptom as the body and the soul trying to communicate with us. So in the sense, um, in the case of menstrual pain, I find, you know, in clients that um, the pain that's coming during the menstrual time is actually always there. The discomfort, the emotional turmoil, and the, you know, different kinds of issues is just that when our menstrual time comes, we're so, that's the time when our spirit is most present and most um, open to energy and open to the other realms. And so, it's not that the menstrual pain is only coming when you are menstruating, but it's actually that when you're menstruating, you can no longer ignore all the subconscious energies that are constantly there. And when you're on your period, it's giving you an opportunity to actually connect with that energy and to, to release, right? Because our menstrual cycles are a chance for us to actually purge multidimensionally in a lot of shamanic traditions, they say that when a woman has a miscarriage, this is actually the body's way of preparing the womb for, you know, an actual child. Um, sometimes women will have miscarriages when there are different entities or energies or ancestral things that need to be purged. And this is one way the body does it, you know, automatically. Now, I don't think that the body is supposed to be the only part of us that is responsible for our healing. Obviously, our conscious mind and our love are supposed to be used consciously, intentionally for our healing. But because we're none of us were taught how to heal ourselves when we were in school, which is so dumb, <laughs> like if we were all taught how to meditate and take care of our energy body when we were in grade one, there would be no sickness in the world. So... Um, but anyway, because none of us were taught to do that, um, you know, we just didn't even know that that was possible. We didn't even think that it's possible to, that we can communicate with our body, that we can close our eyes and just, you know, tune in and see where the blockage is and where the pain and where all the things are. Um, and so, um, I definitely believe that when we begin to actively do this work, you know, this is the easiest way of doing shadow work. I call it proactive self-healing um, because you're actually going in to do the healing before you create external situations to trigger you, <laughs> right? We're always creating um, because the body is hyper-intelligent and we're multidimensional. So our body and our spirit is always trying to align us to our highest and original state. And so sometimes, you know, if we are really unwilling or we just don't know how to go in and do the work proactively, um, we end up just creating all sorts of situations outside of ourselves in the reality to mirror to us what we need to look at. But if you get really good and you create space, you know, I recommend doing this at least one to two hours a day. I mean, just think about how traumatized we have been on this planet. 
doing self healing work for one to two hours a day is really not not you know too much to ask i mean getting if you want to get out or if you want to disassemble the false matrix like this is our primary um job is to disassemble it inside of our own system and the way that we do that is through you know these different practices like going in and scanning our multi-dimensional energy body and so um let's move into the astral body the astral body is a, um, it feels more of a less dense field than the emotional body. The astral body is um, a, a part of us that is in the astral plane that we can use to travel and to explore um, the different layers of the astral plane. And there's all sorts of everything in the astral plane. The astral plane merges upwards into all of the higher dimensional galactic and angelic planes. Um, and the astral plane is oftentimes where we have entity attachments, um, where we have fragments of other people, people that are dying, they can start to fray, right? This is why the Buddhists were all about, you know, cleansing our karma before we die, because if we die, and you know, karma or sankara, I just think of it as any energy that is disconnected or out of a line from the totality of creation or divinity itself. So if you are, die, you know, with a lot of regret or sadness or addictions or anything like that um, in your body, those energy actually kind of fray off of you as you transition. And those fragments can attach onto other people. Like say a alcoholic dies and parts of their soul are just like flying around the astral plane because they're frayed off. And then, you know, somebody sitting in a bar and they're an alcoholic, that soul fragment then gets attracted to that person and now you've got an occupant that's how that some of the occup that's how some of the occupants are formed um in the astral plane you also have bodies that have been that or lost or kidnapped um, during astral abductions this happens way more than we think in the astral plane there are um also um tags and kind of sometimes Starseeds can even have kind of like frequency blockers or entities that are assigned to keep their frequency at a certain place. So if you find that you're awakening and you're feeling great and then all of a sudden, like every time you awaken and then something bad happens or something, it just you just crash or you go back to an old cycle that you thought you healed, you might have one of these in your energy body. Um, you know, these things are basically tagged and put on us to keep us from um, reaching our highest potential, because obviously these beings know that we are here, the starseeds are here, we are a danger to their <laughs> dank operations. And so they try to do everything they can to um, stop us. And they did this by doing weird things to us, trying to steal our DNA. And so all of those things you can find in the astral plane. Um, and then, so the, how I experience is almost like a shift in the assemblage point. And the assemblage point is like your vantage point, your perception. Um, most people perceive from inside of their body, they think, oh, I'm just this separate thing, I'm a body. Um, when I explain this, some of you are gonna be like, oh, like I already do this naturally. I actually am already psychically open. I just didn't even know because it's normal to me. So some people, when they're in the 3D, they exist kind of inside their body, inside their head. Um, they are completely separate from anything else. Um, their thoughts are the only source of their mind. And when you begin to activate and expand your aura, you feel like your perception actually kind of pops out. Uh, where, yeah, you're still seeing reality from your eyes, but you could very easily feel like you're also perceiving reality from, you know, around you and above you. And when this um, field is open, um, you're beginning to perceive energies beyond the physical. And, you know, again, I believe that this is our natural state of being. Humans are not supposed to be locked inside of a purely 3D existence, I believe is literally the cause of most disease because our bodies were not created to exist out of alignment with source, out of connection with divinity. It's just not how we were designed. And so 
And then we're talking about the ascension, right? Ascension of our consciousness. Um, and then we descend into our body through embodying those higher levels of consciousness. And this is a full circle of the true ascension process where you ascend and expand your level of consciousness to experience higher and higher and being closer and closer to the oneness, to the one, the one divine creation, which feels like, you know, aliveness and joy and expansion. And then beginning to actually pull those energies into the body and experience yourself in the physical as that divine energy. So we basically outlined, you know, a sense there because as we go beyond the astral you begin to explore you know your higher and higher dimensional aspects of consciousness um, until you reach you know the angelic realms and beyond where everything's literally you know you do feel yourself as a collective consciousness or the one divine consciousness and there's just so much love and the process of pulling that into the body is the thing that we have the hardest time with I know that with starseeds, it's really easy to actually feel those frequencies because, again, that is where you came from, right? Being in a physical body, on the other hand, <laughs> is not as easy because you're so used to being in those free-flowing, majestic, beautiful creational realms, and then you're now inside this physical body, and the physical body is carrying the ancestral stuff, you know, the trauma that it experienced as a child, um, and abductions and, you know, MK Ultra from the TV. And all of a sudden your body is almost, you know, you, you have such a hard time staying in it because the vibration is just so dense and so difficult for you to stay in it. And so a lot of starseeds end up just floating from the heart and above. And the new age glass ceiling <laughs> movement loved to capitalize on this, they're like, yes, yeah, Darcy's just stay in your heart and up. Stay in your heart and up. Don't worry. You're being of love and light. You don't need to do anything but be in your heart and up. And what does that end up looking like is star beings that um, instead, of instead of their 3D reality reflecting the truth of you being an infinite creator being, an infinite creator being that's, you know, capable of creating anything, any resources, any experience that you need to fulfill your mission, instead of the 3D plane reflecting those truths, you end up with, you know, star seeds that are sick, that feel like they're constantly being psychic attacked, that are broke, that, you know, can't seem to just land and get on with our mission. And, you know, it's because those higher frequencies are having a hard time landing in our physical body. So then, you know, it's the, the circle of life. <laughs> we go ascend to the higher dimensions and we have to bring it back down here to earth. Um, and the process of doing that is definitely going down into the lower chakras. Um, whew, and we want to talk about trauma-based mind control because this is really the basis of it. You know, when we think trauma-based mind control, a lot of people just go right to the military experiments of MK Ultra in the 1940s and 50s and in World War II. Well, actually, you know, the CIA programs that we hear about, those were the experiments, but what results were they looking for and what kind of research were they able to come up with? And then how did they apply that research to mass society? You know, it's not just coming in through uh, mass media, but actually many, many limbs of our society. And so let's just break it down. Think about, you know, a normal person's birthing experience into the 3D. They're born, and that's not even talking about their experience having been inside the womb, right? Was, was there fights? You know, were their parents cheating on each other? Were their parents calling each other terrible names? Were their parents fearful of scarcity and poverty and death? Um, was there societal and stress in the mother's life when we were in utero? And then let's go even back further. You know, when our parents were coming together to, to make us, were they in an absolute state of divine love? Or, you know, was there other energies that were in the mix? And then we talk about our birthing experience. We were born into like this room of crazy artificial lights and beeping machines. And the doctor grabs us by the foot and spanks us, you know, welcome to the world. It's like, <laughs> so 
all those experience, you know, even with circumcision as well. Um, and this thing called medical kidnapping, which is a real thing in certain states, where the hospital is literally legally allowed to take custody of the baby for four hours after the baby is born so that they can do various different kinds of scientific experiments through vaccines and whatever. Um, so that's basically how our current society says is normal, a normal way for us to enter the world. But you immediately see how that, you know, is a very traumatic experience. That's why, you know, when we start to do the, the healing work, almost every person has fetal and birth trauma. And it's not supposed to be like that, right? So our life literally began with trauma and trauma splits or fragments our awareness and freezes us in time. So not all of our consciousness, not all of our energy is available to us until we're gonna go back and unfreeze and, and bring those parts back. Um, so then, you know, do we even really wanna talk about baby prisons and, you know, mom having to go back to work when really she's meant to be with the baby for years after the baby is born? being completely supported by the village. You know, there's just all of these different things that in our society just continually traumatize us forever. <laughs> and so that is why it's so hard for people to wake up. You know, Starseed, we come in with a lot of antiviral. We come in with a lot of genetic strands that protect us from that and we have skills from other dimensions and other lifetimes that really help us with the healing process. And that is why we're having a much easier time than a lot of people. We're waking up a lot faster. We're coming to our senses a lot faster. Um, but the reason that we are coming to our senses a lot faster is because of those past lifetimes and those strands of DNA that we brought with us. And so for a lot of human beings, you know, that process of awakening is arduous and difficult it's just simply because um, there is just so much in the way. And that is why I have so much compassion for everyone. Um, I know that we as a Starseed community have the power and the intelligence and the creativity to um, channel our compassion into things that really support the collective. And that's really where I wanna direct our attention. I spend my whole life creating bridges and technologies and books and soundtracks and frequencies and every possible thing I can think of to translate this, these light technologies into human society. And that's really what we're here to do. And there's a lot of programs in the new age glass ceiling movement that wants, you, wants to direct your attention away from your true mission away from embodying you know, your bodhisattva and your compassionate light worker self and to actually be on your mission instead of thinking, oh, I'm gonna send out of here, see you later losers, like you guys aren't high vibe enough or whatever. Um, so this is like an awakening in the heart and um, whew, I just went on a ramble there, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take just a just a quick breather, just a quick breather, because that was intense. So, whew, if you are a star seed that feel like your mission is to liberate humanity from the confines of their multi-dimensional prison and you're like, how the heck do I do this? I you know, run this mentorship program with my Galactics and so far it's just been extraordinary. The next um, school year starts in August, so just keep that in mind because we're really training warriors. I was speaking on this podcast recently saying that my dream is to just train 300 super, <laughs> super Jedis who can operate you know, on this level, when you know, when you're working on someone, you're like, there's this layer, and then you had this trauma, and then there's this implant. Let's clear that out, and let's move to the next thing. And you know, by the end of the one or two hour session, the person's in an entirely different frequency. You know, work with actual results. And imagine if we can then the 300 of us 
go and address any specific thing like you know do a study on schizophrenia and we do just free sessions on 2000 people and have results where we actually you know heal those people because i know that this is real medicine right um, I know that a lot of you are resonating. So if we can do that, obviously I can't do that myself. <laughs> I can't do 2,000 sessions myself in, in a few months to come up with results like that. So my goal, my presence, is really just to inspire you guys to know that you can stand, you can embody, you can activate your superpowers. Um, Okay, let's see here. <laughs> okay, so the most expanded parts of our aura, of our energy body, are 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 density aspects of self that all indigos and light workers can have access to, um, but it requires such a deep level of that shadow work first because you can't rise until you have that foundation to stand on and that foundation is our lower chakras um, and i guess really what i'm saying is that there are these super high frequency technologies that we can connect with um, the earth star healer is actually a light technology that i'm a representative of um, it was crafted by um, a council of andromedan syrian and pleiadian beings um, and we brought it to earth so that we can restore divine coherence in all dimensions and that begins with human dna human consciousness and expands into the earth's grids and etc um, and we're gonna experience working with that light technology today i'm gonna bring that energy in um, so let's take one second i'm gonna drink some water and then we are going to do a group healing with this frequency um, today we're going to be focusing on the solar plexus um, and probably any open negative portals and um, astral attachments and cords and things like that. But predominantly the solar plexus because I find that, you know, the solar plexus is our sense of self. So if we live for 20, 30, 40, 50 years as Lucy, as Jill, um, you know, this false matrix personality that is people pleasing or that, you know, is just trying to fit in or is just trying to make sense of it all. And it's just completely not even in awareness that we have a soul and a higher self. We seem to come up with these personality traits that cope with the reality. So when all those energies and outdated versions of ourself are what's seated in our solar plexus as our sense of self, it's hard to embody our true self because our glass is full. So what we want to do is just dump out all the stuff that is outdated and that is no longer needed. And so we, our glass is actually empty to be able to fill up with the source of our own soul's essence. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, and man, I just love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in with me um, on these Saturdays. I would love to you know, any feedback, if you just want to let me know um, if these sessions are helpful, what you would like to see more of, you know, any sort of feedback, because these shows are my love to you, and I just want to be the most supportive that I can, and so if there's something that you need help with, um, definitely just let me know, <laughs> and I'm just going to give you a big hug from afar and give you what you need, because we are are getting strong my family and we are here here we are <laughs> all right so i just invite you to get some water and you know get comfortable you can lie down and we're gonna get started with our clearing today in just a minute
Take a deep breath in, expanding the lower belly. Exhaling, release all tension. Take a deep breath in, all the way down to your feet. Exhaling, grounding down into this presence, into this body. Take an inhale, expanding the belly as far as it can go. Exhaling, release all fear, all anxiety, all resistance. Beginning to bring your awareness inwards. I'm gonna just journey through the body real quick. Have a smile on your face as if you're greeting a dear, dear friend. Or somebody that you love very dearly, yourself. And just with this gentle smile, begin to bring your awareness from the top of your head. Smiling into your scalp, into your hair. Smiling into the cells inside of your forehead and your, your skull and your pineal gland. Just give your pineal gland a little smiley wink. Smiling this delicious light into your crown, into your brain, into the brain stem in the back. Smiling into your mouth, into your jaw, into your chin. And smiling into your nasal passage. And just for a moment, feel the air coming in and out of your nostrils. Feeling the air coming in and out of your nostrils. Feeling the miracle of life. Feeling the ecstasy and the vibration of aliveness moving into your body. Moving with the breath down into the throat, into the chest, into the lungs. Smiling into the lungs, feeling a gratitude for life. And know that in this moment, just for being, you are loved. You are perfect. You're infinitely deserving and worthy of all of life. Smiling into our shoulders, into the back of our heart. Smiling into our spine, lighting up the entire spinal column in gold. Allowing our awareness to expand in our heart. Smiling into the heart. Feeling this warmth beginning to emerge and expand all the way out through your arms into your hands feel the energy flowing from your heart into your hands and at this point if it helps you can open up in your hands as if energy is flowing freely through them if it helps sometimes it helps us to receive and channel energy if we open our hands so you can open your hands like this feel like to So moving our awareness now into our belly, into our solar plexus. And just gently smile into the rib cage, into the stomach organ, into the spleen, the pancreas, the liver on the two sides, right inside of our rib cage and smile into our large and small intestines as well. And now go a level deeper in the subtle energy realms of the solar plexus beyond the organs. 
the field of energy that is interwoven in the space. Feel how your solar plexus is feeling. Is there any tension? Is there any anxiety? Is there only a strong sense of love for yourself? Do you love and accept yourself exactly as you are? Higher self, galactic team, source of all creation, we are commanding for a complete clearing for all beings inside of this energy field at this time, if it is in alignment for your highest love, highest joy, and highest soul essence embodiment at this time, we're commanding for a complete clearing in the solar plexus of all anti-self viral coding, self-loathing, self-criticism, self-judgment, self-doubt, self-hatred, and any other related networks of the anti-self programming that may exist whew, in all dimensions, in all of time space, in all parallel selves, in all of our genetics. Commanding from higher self a complete clearing of all vibrations of the anti-self programming. through all dimensions to source any fragmented soul aspects, any inner children that are frozen or stuck in any moment in time, in all dimensions, in all of time space, all inner children that may have felt abandoned or lost or fearful or they're not getting what they need commanding for higher self to come in and connect to all of those pieces of ourself for those parts of ourself to be absolutely enveloped in God light in the frequency of our divine oneness where you are cherished and loved and heard in every moment
is a vortex of energy opening from the higher dimensions of your higher self. And it's almost like this, you know, when you flush a toilet and it goes blue, 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 and it swirls down. It's that kind of energy, but the energy of the higher self, your true soul essence, is kind of swirling down into the body. And where it was tense or where it was blocked before, perhaps there is an easier and less resistance to this energy coming in, your soul walking into the body. And I'm continuing to swirl any discordant energy that's ready to be cleared from the lower chakras. Again, I'm just flushing the toilet. <laughs> I'm pulling our higher self essence into the body. Open the feet chakras here. Open the vortex and the tailbone. Open the cervix and the gates of life. moment into the etheric level of the body you know you get these chills right and it's, it's like when synchronicities happen when you hear spirit speak you get these chills and it feels so good but you know that we can feel that way we can activate that feeling of being alive and so we're just activating this tickle this energy in our body activating this joy of being alive of being in a body of recognizing how enjoyable and joyful you know being in this body can be as it, it was designed pleasure joy creative fulfillment i'm feeling this orgasmic kind of organism being alive just this mirth this tickle this shimmer And we're welcoming all of the soul pieces that may have returned or found comfort in being in the body today. Just giving them a warm hug, saying, welcome home. Welcome to this earth experience.
And take a nice, long, deep breath. Mm, what it is to be alive. How blessed we are to be here together. To love all distortion back into alignment, into coherence, into harmony. taking a moment here in the space, allowing all of our brothers and sisters to come back into the space. So welcome back. I'm always equally as in awe of these energies because this vessel is just an oracle for these energies. Um, I think that I'm an oracle for the divine mothers and different medicine spirits. I know that these teams that I work with were the same beings that, you know, created ayahuasca and brought different plant medicines here. I've had some wild ayahuasca experiences. Um, and I know that I'm very intimately connected to the angelic teams that brought these medicines here. You know, my earth name is actually, in Chinese, it means fragrant, fragrant medicinal tea. So I'm very deeply connected to those energies, but I know that this vessel is an oracle for those frequencies, and those frequencies always come through these this vessel, and I experience that the medicine myself, I feel, you know, the healing that takes place, and I am equally as in awe and grateful to these spirit beings and, and galactics that are here holding space and the divine mothers that have held and nurtured us and all parts of us for so long. And, you know, these vibrations, they are our self, too. Anytime somebody says, oh, Z, you know, you're so amazing. You know, this is a vibration of our collective oneness. This is the energy of the divine love that we are. And so I am beyond joyful to be here as a vessel for these frequencies that bring in so much healing for us. And I know that you are going to take that healing out into the world. And this is what it's all about. This is what we're doing. So I am so happy to be here with you guys on Saturdays, providing this support. Um, and that, you know, this community, we really hold space and we come together and we support each other. We feel a togetherness and that makes us strong. So that in itself is really profound. So thank you so much for showing up and being here together. 
It makes me so happy. So how was your experience? Um, if you want to later, you know, when I'm done with the live stream, you can come back to the video and, you know, put your experience down in the comment section because that always helps me with the feedback. I think that sometimes the live chat disappears, but the comments down below, you can't access it right now. <laughs> um. So I'm going to keep the space open just for a little bit longer because I can tell that there's still energies moving. So we're just going to hang out for a few more minutes here. Allow everybody to experience and receive all the energy that they are. Receiving. The app is coming along, you know, it takes time because I'm producing the music and I have this amazing, I'm, I'm using Ableton and I have this amazing um, virtual instrument called Omnisphere and it has just these amazing sounds and I'm coding just every layer of sound with their own frequencies and their own intentions and testing the frequencies on myself. It's so fun. Sometimes I play, you know, I spend an hour coding just every little layer of sounds. That's why it's going to be so powerful because I'm literally just going in and programming every single layer. And there could be 10 layers, you know, in the track. And then I'll play it back on myself for like an hour. And I literally get, I was like, I got to put disclaimers on this because I listened to it for an hour and I was like getting high and... <laughs> So we're going to see how it works. And we're definitely going to do more experiments and little sneak previews of the app. But I'm hoping to have a preliminary released by the end of this year. I already have you know, uh, a dear family brother um, who is kind of in that field. He created video games for um, you know 13 years. And so. <laughs> you guys are so happy to be my guinea pigs. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Um, but yeah, it's definitely so far really fun to create because, you know, sound is just so cool and there's so much that you can do. And I've been getting just these visions of the Hathors coming in and helping me, you know, code the sounds and they're showing me like DNA just like, bursting and people levitating. I was like, are you guys joking or what is going on? <laughs> yeah. So um, you guys are definitely the testers for the app. I'm going to roll out some, um, some trials, but really I want to keep it because these codes are a journey. So that's the point of the whole game is that you go through the game. It's kind of like spiritual Pokemon Go in a way because you have level one and then you do kind of the activation and then it tells you to go and do like an activation in real life. So it'll be like, you know, go take a walk and, you know, connect with a tree or work with this code and code it into the tree or whatever the activity is. And then you have to go and do that in real life and then come back to the app and be like, okay, I did that. And that unlocks the next level. And my hope is that through moving through the entire game, um, that it will move through all the layers of your entire light body so that by the end of it, you are embodied in your, <laughs> your soul is in your body and your body is clear of all distortion and your DNA is activated. That is my intention. I know it's like the 3D, 3D nexus for this multidimensional light technology. Um, so we'll see what happens. It's really fun. Hmm. 
So yeah, how are you guys feeling? How are you guys feeling? There's a leg, so I'm like waiting. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really excited for this app as well. Um, I think um, that the energy is feeling integrated. Definitely drink water, drink lots of water. Um, yeah, do you guys have any suggestions for you know what we could work on next week? Oh, and um, I'm going to be, where does the community keep in touch in between these sessions? So there is a Starseed Mission Support Facebook group um, that, let me post the link here because um, right now, this is temporary. Um, we are working on a Starseed Missions website. I have the starseedmission.com. So I'm working on a community website um, that probably will take me a little bit. It's too bad that I can't have, you know, five of me's um, because <laughs> I could be busy with all of them. But here is the Starseed Mission Support Facebook group. I will also post it in the description of this video. Um, for those of you who want to join, you can also search Starseed Mission Support on Facebook. Um, again, this is a temporary group, um, a temporary Facebook thing because we don't really want to be reliant on Facebook because I did get kicked out <laughs> um, and deleted out of Facebook. So um, this is temporary, but for now, this is where we're meeting. Come on and hang out in the group. Um, yeah, again, this is just temporary. I actually really don't want to use it. It's like, you know, something that we already created, but we are working on a website. It's just going to take some time. My brother, Josh, and I are going to be starting a podcast, and, and I think he's going to be joining me on these things really soon. His energy is definitely present. He was supporting me today, so... Um, you're going to meet him in the Facebook group, and if we can corral him to... Talk to us. He's got secrets that we all want to know about. <laughs> so, so we're saying, um, I'm seeing throat chakra. We can definitely focus on the throat chakra. And when we focus on the throat chakra, it often leads back into the lower chakras. Like people think, oh, you know, you're, not able to speak up or people can't hear you when you're speaking or you know you just have like kind of hard time speaking half the time is actually because there's a blockage in the solar plexus or the sacral chakra that's not able to feed the throat chakra the confidence or the energy to speak so it's always in networks and so we could definitely work on the throat chakra um, next week and all of the little related networks that, um, <laughs> Josh, if you're watching this, I now have uh, an army of people who are going to convince you to <laughs> show us your form. <laughs> um. So we did a talk about the Lemurian energy, I think a week or two ago, two weeks. Um, clearing blood covenants and draconian DNA is a great idea. I think doing a clearing on the Jehovah's seals is a really great idea as well. Um, so that is definitely coming. Wanna just take it easy, you know, prepare, prepare the grounds.
<laughs> so why did I get kicked out of Facebook? Because I was smacking too much truth and they couldn't handle it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was during my 10 day series and um, I did a 10 day of live streaming and near the end, they just deleted my Facebook page. But then and days later, they brought it back to life. So I resurrected. But since then, my Facebook business page has been getting just zero views and zero everything. Um, so I'm still being shadow banned. Um, Kina wants to learn how to release stuck emotional energy. That is a great, um, great subject. Actually, I have a video. It's day three of the live stream series. And I think, let me just make sure and see what it's called. So it's called the original divine human genome. Yeah, so it's the original divine human genome video um, on my YouTube channel. It's um, it says day three of my Ascension and Disclosure series. And in that video, I literally spend an hour and a half talking about different healing techniques to release and heal our emotional body and our inner children. So that's a great resource. Yep. Okay. So somebody says, still can't find you on Facebook. Yeah, my Facebook page is, I heard, like I was trying to share a past video from my Facebook page and this person said that it didn't exist. So I think my Facebook page still got deleted. It's gone. Um, but you can find us on Starseed Mission Support, the Facebook group. Um, and I once again linked it right there. Um, come hang out with us. Um, I'm Xiang Ming Wang on there is my Chinese name. It means fragrant medicinal tea. So I was born to be a healing tea and I'm happy to fulfill that destiny here <laughs> every Saturday sharing, having a tea party with all of you. It really fills me up with so much love and joy to know that these frequencies are supporting you guys in any way. Um, so anyway, on that note, I think we're just about um, closing the field down here. So again, I'm sending you guys so, so much love. Yeah, my father said he read an astrology book for three days before he named me, even though he doesn't believe in anything magical. So I, I must have, uh, I must have uh, sequestered him and influenced him to do that or something. <laughs> anyway, I'm sending you guys so much love. And we're going to work on the throat chakra next week. And we'll see you later. <laughs>